Welcome to our Brookwood Baptist Health Exclusive. My name is Brian Pavlik, and I am joined by a wonderful physician practicing out of Shelby Baptist Medical Center in Alabaster, cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Trent Howard. Dr. Howard, how are you today, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much. Dr. Howard has been with us since August of 2021. He knows what he's doing. Shelby's become a great home for him. But we're going to talk a little bit about cardiothoracic surgery. We're filming this in the middle of heart month, but we're going to take a step deeper into the patient experience, especially when it comes to heart care and, of course, the lung care part of it. And Dr. Howard's going to tell you a little bit about cardiothoracic surgery and even some of the things that he does. But Dr. Howard, if you don't mind, just start us off. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you came to Shelby. So I, I took a little bit of a non-traditional route to get here. I'm, I'm from Kentucky originally. I was born and raised there. I uh, actually raised on a tobacco farm in Kentucky. I raised tobacco until I was, you know, e even as an adult. Um, got married young, had kids young. So uh, went to school to become a paramedic and I worked at, as a paramedic and a firefighter for 10 years, actually. Some of the kids were in school and wife was in nursing school and I went back and finished my degree. Um I actually have a degree in economics because I didn't think at that point in my life medical school was a possibility. And my wife encouraged me to apply, and I applied and got in. And uh, we spent four years in Knoxville, Tennessee for medical school, and then spent seven years in Iowa doing uh, my surgery training. I did general surgery training in Des Moines for five years and then did my cardiothoracic surgery fellowship at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. And seven winters in Des Moines was about all I could I could tolerate. Or seven winters in Iowa was about all we could tolerate. We wanted to get back down south, and so we started looking for jobs in the south. And uh, my wife actually graduated from UAB, did like kind of a distance uh, nurse practitioner program. So she had been to Birmingham, but I had never actually been to Birmingham until the yeah. day I interviewed. Um, so interviewed uh, with a guy who's getting ready to retire. I was fresh out of fellowship. That was a that was a great opportunity for me. Uh, spent three years uh, at another hospital in town. Um, and then uh, came to Shelby in 2021, I think. So. Absolutely. That's fine. So if you're on the table and Dr. Howard's treating you, don't worry the fact that you grew up on a tobacco farm with an economics degree and yep. a former ball. Just, uh, none of that <laughs> matters. Just he's a good guy. Well, we Well-rounded. <laughs> I'm well-rounded. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, you know, in its simplest terms, and I say simplest terms because cardiothoracic surgery can be so detailed, especially with these incredible procedures and things that you can do at that level when it comes to the heart and the lungs. But in its simplest terms, what is a cardiothoracic surgeon and how does somebody wind up basically in your care? So cardiothoracic surgeon is, is anybody that, you know, obviously we operate on the heart. Uh, we operate on the lungs. Uh, a lot of us will do, you know, esophage, esophageal work uh, as well. Foregut work is essentially what it's called. So, um, but, uh, you know, a big part of all of our practices is, is heart surgery and heart procedures, obviously. And so uh, a big part of the patients that I see come from the cardiologist. Uh, they get a heart cath, they get an echocardiogram, they have an abnormal stress test, and they wind up talking to me uh, about their heart valve problems or their heart artery problems or their aortic problems. Um, same thing with, with lung, you know, they, the primary care doctor gets a chest x-ray for a cough. They see something weird, send them to a pulmonologist. Mm -hmm. so they see something even weirder. Um, and then they wind up in my office, um, talking about what to do about it. Yeah. Take it out, watch it, you know, whatever we need to do. Um, same thing with the esophagus and the GI doctors and the primary care doctors. Uh, somebody has a problem swallowing a mass in their esophagus, something in the mediastinum in the middle of the chest and they, they send them to see me. There you go. So it is a little bit of an experience to get to you. It's not just a quick phone call, but, you know, you do know your local cardiologist, pulmonologist, and like you said, primary care and such. And, you know, when, when somebody now has been through multiple stages, like you just mentioned, started with primary care and then a specialist, and now you got to go see somebody else who specializes in the specialty. What is that initial conversation like? Because I'm, I'm assuming that when somebody gets to you, they're scared to death for a variety of reasons. So what is that initial conversation with you when you have them in your office? Right. So I, I think the advantage for me of, of taking kind of a non-traditional route and um, growing up in a small town in Kentucky is I, I, I think I can relate to people pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my dad died of lung cancer. My mom died of heart disease. So I, so I get where these people are coming from. And they're, they're from small towns. And they, they've heard all these scary, scary terms and, and, you know, God forbid I've gotten on Google and looked things up and, and that scared them to death. So the most important thing to me, uh, first of all, is just to try to 
to explain to them exactly what's happening, uh, right. why they're here, because sometimes they don't even know. They just they hear all these scary medical terms and they don't know what's going on, but they know they're sitting in, in a surgeon's office and something bad's happening. So yeah, basically the first thing I do is just to explain to them what's going on and, and, and why they're here to see me. And then next I'll talk about what, what the options are. Um, not always do you have to have an operation. Uh, there may be other options. And so um, is, is there a less invasive option or do you, do you have to have surgery? Or can you treat this with medicine? And, and what does all of those things look like right. long-term moving forward? Um, so I, I try to spend a lot of time uh, with new patients, just making sure they understand what's going on and what their life is going to look like moving forward, you know, after talking to me. Um, and then, you know, if, if it's something, you know, they need an operation, they need something done, then we talk specifics about what that's going to look like. How long you be in the hospital? What's your recovery going to be like? What are the risks? Um, what's the goal? I mean, uh, if you're going to do a heart operation, what's the goal? And the goal is to live a long time without having a heart attack and, and, and those kind of things. So. Yeah. Uh, I just like making sure that people are clear on what their life is going to look like after talking to me. Understand. Understand. Can you tell he's got good bedside manner? My goodness gracious. <laughs> We're talking to Dr. Trent Howard. He's a cardiothoracic surgeon practicing at a Shelby Baptist Medical Center in Alabaster, of course, part of Brookwood Baptist Health and our fine network and just wide range of physicians. And, you know, we, we've got so many great opportunities and things to get people back on the road to recovery and you mentioned scary terms and Google can be in the enemy of the patient because it's just going to plant all these seeds in the mind about I have this or what does this term mean? And those big terms do come with the procedures that you do. Uh, you know, there's acronyms, there's long names and all that. Tell us a little bit, just some of the more common procedures that you perform right there in Shelby. Um, you can describe a little bit what they are, but what are, what are some ones that people may be hearing if they were to say, hey, Dr. Howard, uh, if we have this, what's the next step? procedural wise, what are some of those terms that we may want to get familiar hearing? All right. So probably the, you know, the most common thing that, that most cardiothoracic surgeons do is, is the cabbage operation or the bypass operation um, where you know, we go through your breastbone, um, use an artery from inside your chest, maybe some vein from your leg, maybe an artery from your arm. And, and, and I tell people, I'm just a plumber. I'm just a, I'm a people plumber. Um, I get, I get blood flow past the blockages. I don't take out stents. Um, we don't take out the arteries. We don't take out your heart. We just get blood flow past the blockages so your heart muscle gets the blood flow and the oxygen that it needs. Um, valve surgery is another common thing we do, the aortic valve um, and the mitral valve, which kind of sits in the middle of the heart. Those are the most common valves that we have to, to, to replace or repair. Um, and as, you know, as far as lung surgery goes, you know, most of the time uh, what I'm seeing are, are lung masses or, or things that we know are lung cancer uh, already. and then. Um, I actually use the robot uh, to take those out, uh, to take out the cancers, uh, to get the lymph nodes so that we can properly stage it and so that the medical oncologists and those kind of people can, can make sure that getting a proper long-term treatment moving forward. Um, aorta, you know, sometimes replace the aorta, uh, people with aneurysms. Uh, sometimes uh, in certain parts of the aorta, you can put a stent inside of it without actually doing an open operation, which is nice because recovery is a lot quicker. Um, other vascular procedures that we do, um, carotid disease and, and, and those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but you know, the majority of my practice and most cardiothoracic surgeons is, is heart surgery. Absolutely. Um, where you talk yeah. about valves, and, and we work with the cardiologist uh, as well, doing the Taber aortic valves. You know, where, where it's kind of an endovascular aortic valve and the mitral clips, uh, where we can fix the the, the leaky uh, mitral valve and, and, and select patients. So uh, we work. You know, hand in hand pretty well with the cardiologist on what we call structural heart disease, there you go. Uh, which is uh, valvular disease, essentially. Yeah, no, and that's perfect. I mean, you're you're very involved and it's very detailed and and that's the thing. And we, we, we can get into future discussions about how these things procedurally go because it, it's some of them are so fascinating. And, you know, the, especially these minimally invasive things, it's just completely fascinating. If you do want to Google things, only for the positive of these minimally invasive procedures. It, it really is a cool thing to see. And you just think about open heart surgery and everything and how far it's come even in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, and then you got somebody with, with a cool personality as well, Dr. Howard, you're just more the blessed. But, you know, Dr. Howard, we, we have- I tell people all the time, we, 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 I, I, I tell people all the time, you have students, with students and nurses and those kind of 
people will come in and watch operations and, and I tell yeah. them, yeah, I, I have the coolest job in the world. Yeah. I mean, it, you do. And and that's the thing. You have a cool job. And, and I'm glad you mentioned kind of the nurses and all that, because it is a team. And we kind of talked about, you know, the physicians helping each other and getting the patient down the road to recovery. But you do have a team that you work with, whether it's your clinical side or your procedural side. Talk about and, and, and I want you to do it in this term, if you don't mind. You know, the big slogans for Brookwood Baptist Health this year is heart care better together or lung care better together or women's care. So we have this something care is better together. Talk a little bit about just what your involvement is with that staff, even those referring providers, now that we are post procedure and we're getting back on the road to recovery. How involved do you remain? Do you turn it back over? What is the staff kind of interaction? Just talk a little bit about that and how everybody does this better together. Right. So now, me as a surgeon and, and my job is nothing without nurses. Um, first and foremost, the, the ICU nurses, the OR nurses, the, the, the step down unit nurses, the rehab nurses, um, they, they're the people that are the minute to minute taking care of my patients, um, notifying me of, of things that they think are abnormal, things that need to be addressed because I can't be at bedside with every patient 24 hours a day. Uh, so the nurses are my eyes and ears and, and my hands oftentimes and uh, take care of, of, of patients. In the OR, I have some fantastic anesthesiologists and CRNAs uh, that do a really good job of managing the patients before and after uh, coming off the uh, bypass or during the lung surgery. Um, speech therapists, physical therapists, uh, occupational therapists, the social workers, all, all, all those people um, making sure that, that before people go home or go to rehab or wherever it is they're going to go, that they're they have all the resources in place, that they're safe, that all the boxes have been checked um, so that they're going to leave the hospital into a safe environment where they have all the things they need to continue the recovery because you're only in the hospital for five to seven days, usually is what I tell people. But your recovery after heart surgery is a couple of months, really, mm -hmm. uh, until, the, until the, the breastbone's healed and you really get your appetite and energy level back. So it takes a couple of months to really kind of get back on your feet yeah. um, and without all of these things in place, um, my job's impossible, really. Um, you know, as far as referring physicians, the primary care doctors, uh, my, my office staff does a great job, and, and, and I'm happy to talk to anybody as well, text and phone call or whatever, uh, answer any questions. But the, my office staff does a really good job of, of um, communicating with the primary care physicians, the cardiologists, the pulmonologists, and making sure that they know what we did to the patient, uh, what their hospital course looked like, um, what our expectations are of them in that first 30 to 60 days. Uh, and then after a month or two months, most of those patients, I, I cut them loose back to their referring doctors, which primary care doctor, the cardiologist to, to monitor long term. So once you have your operation, uh, you're at a good point in, in your recovery. Uh, you don't have to come and see me anymore. So it's one less doctor you have to deal with because the primary go. care doctors, the cardiologist, and I'll just are very capable of, of monitoring these things and handling them long term. <clears throat> very cool. Very cool. Well, we're wrapping up here. And I know, you, you know, like you just mentioned, it's, it's kind of a that's a sad ending. You let them go. You, you say, go back to your normal life. And hopefully I never see you. Um, but I know yeah. you and, and I know your patients. I, I hear it all the time. How how great you are. And that's from the staff at Shelby, from the patients, um, even though you have let them go out of your care. Is there a story or anything that just always sticks with you about why you do this, why you continue to go? Or is it just, you know, Brian, every day is different and you never know. But just, just what is that one either story or that one thing that that says, like you said, this is the coolest job? Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of times people, you know, patients will come see me in the office after surgery or they'll, they'll say something afterwards about, you know, hey, Dr. Howard, you saved my life. I don't, I don't really I don't see it that way. I, it's my job is to take care of people and then to try to give them a long life. Um, but sometimes, sometimes you know that you really made a difference. Um, not that we don't every day, but, um, you know, recently there's a young woman who's about my age that, um, had tore her aorta, hmm. um, nearly ruptured her aorta, uh, kind of ignored the symptoms for a little while, um, showed up in the hospital emergency room, they did the proper workup, figured out what was going on, and thought, oh, my gosh, we got to call Dr. Power to come fix this right now. And we did uh, in the middle of the night. And she walked out of the hospital five, six days later, seen her in the office a couple of times. She's back to living her life with her husband and her kids. And 
Um, and, and that's kind of the rewarding thing that if, if, if she hadn't come to the hospital or if we hadn't done what we did and if all the other people hadn't done their job, um, this 40 something year old woman, um, you know, her husband would be without a wife and her kids without a mom. And, um, so th those are the things that, you know, that, that you've done that have really made a positive impact in somebody's life. Well, making a positive impact. I know that's what Dr. Howard and his team right there in Alabaster does. And I just appreciate you because I know you got to go back and see some patients and stuff. You took some time out of your busy schedule to talk with us, especially during heart month. Uh, what better time just to talk about these things. And, you know, again, he may be down the road in your patient recovery and in your heart care journey, but uh, he just symbolizes one, the many, many wonderful professionals and physicians and staff that we have with Brookwood Baptist Health. And again, heart care, women's care, uh, primary care, whatever, it's all better together. And we are better together because of Dr. Howard. So I appreciate your time today, sir. I appreciate you watching this video. And if we can do anything for us, remember, better together. Thank you. Have a great day.